Hi everyone, it's Aaron and Heidi, and this is another edition of The Book Brood, and we're going to do a mid-February wrap-up today. We're filming it a little bit early, but we are going to have to start pre-filming all our videos on the weekends mm -hmm. um, from now on, so today is the day. Yes. So... Should we do a we should we do a restricted section and I say oh, we're, right. we're talking about the we're, we're drinking the big wave, uh, and this is by Kona Brewing Company. It's we, a golden ale. We just oh. found this beer, and it's really difficult for us to find beer that we enjoy, both of us. Right. Much like she doesn't books. really drink beer too much. Mm -hmm. So, but she started lately, which is great. All right. You go ahead and start. So, this is Never Night by Jay Kristoff. This is one that Heidi was going to do a kind of read-along with, but she got caught up in Captive Prince, which she's going to talk about in a moment here. Mm -hmm. So I was kind of not into the book I was reading, so I said, whatever, I'll, I'll give this a try. I ended up DNFing this. Um, it had good elements in it. It had a very deep, deep world, which I appreciate. But the author kind of treats you like you're stupid and fills in these footnotes on, on like every page almost. And some of them are like half of the page. And they're not really any help, really. Um, one of them I remember was, oh yeah, and there's a cat in the corner of the room. It's like, Thanks, Jay. Thanks. The characters are okay. And then there's, you know, magic school. But it's assassin school in here. But, you know, the, uh, you got the antagonist student that comes up and it's like you better stay out of my way main character and then you've got the uh teacher that you know decides to take out their rage on on the main character and just her is formulaic formulaic and it's not really my thing i don't read ya so i got almost halfway through it and i put it down and i talked about that way more than i should have but... that's okay so, and then I read Stranger in a Strange Land by Robert A. Heinlein. This is known as one of his, it's like his magnum opus, but it's not go really good. I didn't enjoy mm -hmm. it. Um, it. If you're familiar with Heinlein's philosophy about how the world should be, how people should act, you know, the, you know be as free as, as you want to be in your own mind kind of thing, it's... It's just, this is just a broken record. It's just his philosophy hammered at you over and over and over again through these monologues of these characters or what's set up to be dialogue, but it's really just to get, a, you know, the philosophy out and in your head over and over again. And this is one of the worst ones when it comes to Heinlein sexism. There's the main female characters, um, great line in here, nine out of ten times a woman's raped, it's a woman's fault. So there's that wow. stuff in there. So it's hard to read in the modern day. And so that got two stars for, uh, from me. The first thing that I read was Been Here All Along by Sandy Hall. And I was really looking forward to this and I almost bought my own copy, but then luckily found it at the library. This is about uh, two high schoolers, um, well, main, the main character realizes that he's in love with his best friend and he's pretty much talking about how puberty sucks and high school sucks and why does it have to suck even more falling in love with my best friend or whatever. And it sounded really cute and I am really glad I did not buy it though because the writing in here was absolutely horrible. The dialogue was so cheesy. Like, I... I was going to read a little bit of just to like prove how awful this is. So this is one of the main characters. There's like four perspective characters mm -hmm. and they switch in the middle of a chapter, which is awesome. So this is Ruby's perspective and she says, I'm a head cheerleader. I probably love them by default. There's a semi-decent chance that I'm biased about the whole thing, but really, what's not to like? Ugh. No, 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 no. God, no. Um, so I, I literally almost DNF'd this, but I was too lazy. Literally, that's all it was. I was too lazy to get up and get another book, and so I just <laughs> kept reading. And at some point in the middle, it caught my attention, and I was 
you know, invested enough to finish it up. And it was kind of cute, the relationship unfolding, but it was so poorly written. It was, it was awful. So I gave it two and a half stars and I'm really, really glad I got it from the library. Yeah. The next one I read, read I don't have a copy of, uh, it's Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. This one, I'm glad I read 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea first, because that really lowered my expectations for Verne. But this one was better. It had better, much better pacing. The, the science is it is, and it is kind of silly, but uh, it was written a long time ago, so you can forgive him for that. Uh, but the, the intellectualism in it, I guess, was a lot less heavy-handed than it was in 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And it kept my interest the, the whole way through, so I gave, it, uh, I gave it three stars. So after that horribly written novel, I decided to pick up Captive Prince, the first in the Captive Prince trilogy, hoping that it was better, because this is YA and this is adult, and usually when making the transition, the writing improves significantly. And this is a story about a coup and the heir to the throne is thrust into slavery and sold to a neighboring heir to the throne of a different country. And, um, they eventually they fall in love and but they can't be together because their countries are rivals and it sounds really really cheesy but i was really impressed with the writing and the um the plot actually it was i was expecting it to just be absolute trashy like um erotica and it really wasn't there was no romance in this first one at all and it was more just um, political intrigue and um, culture clash and things like that. And I really enjoyed it. I gave it five stars. Next thing I read is another Heinlein novel. It's Citizen of the Galaxy. And I love that barcode sticker that's right there that is stuck on good. And I'm kind of afraid to take it off. But anyway, this one was much better than Stranger in a Strange Land. This is a rags to riches story about a slave that is no one wants him at the slave auction and so this beggar ends up paying like pennies for him uh, but then it turns out that um, the beggar is much more than a beggar and is really just posing as one and it takes this child on an adventure through being a space trader to being in the military to uh, intrigue with the upper echelons of society and it was a lot of fun, uh, just really quick, and just it had a perfect amount of uh, the just kind of F you to the system that Heinlein, I think, is great at writing. And this one actually wasn't, it had an element that's not really present in at least what I've read of Heinlein so far. He does a lot of, you know, F you to the government and how governments can, you know, suck and get buried in bureaucracy, but he also criticizes um, corporatism as well in that same sense, which uh, I think um, something that's missing from, or just not mentioned as much. I'm not explaining it too well. He parallels the evils involved government, corporatism, cor yeah. you know, the corporation. I don't know if I explained that well. But, yeah, so I gave that one four stars. Okay, so after Captive Prince, I needed to know what happens next. So I picked up Prince's Gambit, um, also by C.S. Picot, um, book two. And this one was much different, where the first one, they were in, the main characters were in the rival country's um, court, and all the political stuff going on there. And in this one, they are um, on the march, and there's a bunch of uh, the army, and you get a bunch of battle tactics and training stuff. And still, there is very, very, very little romance in this. I don't know why this is 
pushed as a an erotic romance novel. It, it's really not. Like, <laughs> it is so much about politics and um, trying to, you know, wrestle the the throne away from the regent who's trying to take it away from one of the main characters. But mm -hmm. anyways, I really enjoyed it. I think that I got lost a little bit in places because there was just, you know, there was a uh, training and then battle and then training and then battle. And it, it got a little bit um, long winded in that. Um, but I still did really enjoy it was it was going through character growth and establishing there's a ton of characters that you need to know and they introduce them to you in small doses so you can get to know them and I enjoyed this but not as much as the first one so I gave it four stars next thing I have I don't have a copy I had to go back to the library but it was I hate fairyland and that was by Scotty Young I think so is it? And I enjoyed that. I gave it four stars. It was a very crude mm -hmm. fairy tale telling of, you know, what the the little girl's wish that comes true isn't really what the little girl wishes for, you know, or what she thought she was wishing for. I, I enjoyed it. Um, enjoyed it enough. And... Yes, the, the cursing was, was very good in there, you know, fluff yeah. you. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? And the, the Jiminy Cricket character, Larry the Fly, was very, very fun. Larrington Wentzworth or something? Yes, the third. Mm, um, yes. So yeah, four stars. I enjoyed that one. And then, of course, I had to finish off the trilogy with King's Rising, book three, and this one, I actually hit a point about a quarter of the way in where I wasn't sure I was actually going to finish it. I was just, I didn't think they were going to be together. It was, it was too hard. Um, but I pushed through and they made it. It was okay. And I liked this one. It was, um... I liked most of... So, towards the end, there were a few things that I felt like were a little too convenient. The entire trilogy made it a point of having these very long, drawn-out um, strategies between two of the main characters. It was like a very long chess game. Of like, I know if I move this piece, it'll set off a chain reaction, and then they will, re you know, um, retaliate in this way, and I'm already planning for like 12 moves down the road. And I feel like for a trilogy that's set up like that, to have convenience at the end was kind of cheap. Mm. But um, on the whole, I thought it was a really good trilogy. And I gave this last one four and a half stars. I remember when you were at that difficult part. I think I was cooking dinner and you came into the kitchen and we're just... You were I was just, very upset. You were just stricken and I don't think I was empathizing. No, you weren't. <laughs> you didn't realize how many feels was happening right then. There were so many feels. When I didn't know. You I didn't. didn't. There was no way for me to know that how difficult it was. It was very difficult. The next thing I read is Birds of Prey, New 52. This one's the third part of the story. I had taken a break from the Birds of Prey, partly because the New 52 run is not written by Gail Simone, and this new guy, Dwayne... Schwarinski? Schwarzinski? Schwarzinski. He, he does okay, um... Just not as fun as Gail Simone writes the characters. I do appreciate Katana being part of the group, but I don't appreciate that uh, Huntress was taken out. And I'm not sure how I feel about this guy Condor that's thrown in there. Uh, but I do appreciate Batgirl being back as Batgirl. And it's a fun story with lots of ninjas and stuff. So four stars on that one. Awesome. And then I started, I picked up uh, Hickman's Avengers, Jonathan Hickman. This one's Avengers World. This is the beginning of his run that he did 
I really like this story. It's epic in scale, very cosmic oriented. Uh, so lots of space gates and things like that. And it has a lot of new characters that I've not read into much, new to me characters. And so I appreciate that. And that's lots of fun. I gave it four stars as well. Awesome. And that is our mid-February wrap-up. Yep. Go ahead and give us some comments. Tell us how your February is going. Uh, hit that like button. <laughs> hit that subscribe button if you're not already subscribed. And we'll see you next time, everyone. Bye.